Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. We're starting off here in the nether because- oh, he saw me, oh no. I just encountered a pack of three endermen who spawned over here and I really think I want to fight them all to get some more ender pearls. The problem with that, of course, <laughs> is that now they're attacking me en masse and I really have to be very careful about- there we go, thank goodness for that. Okay, I was- I was very worried that- attacking all those endermen in one go would be a bit of a problem and I think I accidentally looked at two of them. Normally they don't get angry if you attack one of their own but <laughs> this guy over here seems to have ignored me. The others were really having a go. So anyway let's uh, very quickly drop into a cubby hole and take out this last one. Hopefully we should be able to get ourselves a couple more ender pearls because those might be useful even though we're going to a place that's going to be absolutely surrounded by endermen. You never know when an ender pearl might come in handy. So let's Take one last look at this guy. He might even walk over the magma blocks on the way here if we're lucky, so he'll take a little bit of extra damage. Come on, buddy. You can see me. I know I know you can see me. Okay, he's literally standing right there. There we go. <laughs> he's even picked up the netherrack look. <laughs> All right, there we go. Should be able to take this guy out nice and easily. And my shield is looking very low on durability right now. So once we get out into the stronghold, I think I might even do a quick bit of mining to smelt myself another iron ingot and we'll make another shield because I didn't bring any iron ingots with me. I don't feel like going all the way back to the homestead right now, but I do think we need to make sure that we're well prepared for this fight ahead of us because today is the day, ladies and gentlemen, when we're going to be fighting the Ender Dragon. And the first thing I'm going to do is something that a lot of people suggested I do in the comments of the episode where we found the End Portal in the first place. I'm actually going to break the Silverfish Spawner. And this might seem like sacrilege to those of you guys who are familiar with spawners and everything and think that breaking a spawner is kind of sacrilegious is that you should always keep spawners and so forth but the silverfish spawner is more of an annoyance than an actual useful thing you can't really use it for anything other than experience farming and there are much better ways of doing that not to mention the fact that there are a huge amount of other strongholds that we could potentially find in the world so if we want to do anything with a silverfish spawner we can always just find another stronghold which will have exactly the same silverfish spawner in exactly the same place next to the end portal over there but they will only ever teleport you to the same end dimension so it doesn't really matter if we find another stronghold or not. So let's have a quick look around. There are some caves in the vicinity nearby, if I recall correctly. So we should hopefully be able to find ourselves a nice cave where we can grab an iron ingot or something like that. Let's see. Uh, we can probably close up some of these gaps in here that are letting in water. Um, I wonder if there's going to be some stuff behind some of these doors. Again, this is strange stronghold generation where it seems like a lot of the... Uh, the stronghold is overlapping with other bits. I think we could probably just dig out into... Oh, into another part of the stronghold, apparently. Well, I've been here before, it looks like. That's the library right over there. Of course it is. Oh, and there's some iron right there. Fantastic. That couldn't have been better. All right, let's grab some of this. Looks like we've got a fair amount of iron here, and we should only need a little bit of that. But let's grab enough stone that we can build ourselves a furnace as well. Let's get... Yeah, we've got 12 cobblestone. That's more than enough. Good. All right, let's find our way back to the portal room. It looks like there's a, a bit of a cave down there as well, if we needed it. Very good. Very good. And let's see if I can actually remember which way we went back. Nope, looks like I'm getting turned around here. There we go, looks like we're back in the portal room, wonderful stuff. So we can finally put down our ender chest in here and start setting up for the dragon fight. There we go, we've got a bunch of stuff here and before we go any further, let's quickly recap the stuff I brought for this dragon fight. So we've got a little bit of wood, we're going to take some of that out to make a crafting table. Of course we had some cobblestone in there that I could have used to make a furnace, not to worry. So we've got some ladders which we will need to climb the towers in the end, a couple of backup tools just in case we end up dying and respawning. We've got a spare bow and some spare arrows. I've got 64 arrows with me, which should be enough. We're also going to take these extra projectiles so I can show you some fun things while we're in the end. I might take one of the two golden apples here. I think we should be okay without a golden apple, but it's always fun to have one for some extra regeneration. And we've also got a splash potion of swiftness and our slow falling potion as well. So I'm going to take maybe two of those. The fight might last longer than four minutes, so I might take a couple of those with me. Now the bed we will actually need to sleep over here. I'm not certain if it's daytime or nighttime right now. I don't have a clock on me. Looks like it is nighttime. Okay, good. So I'm actually going to set my spawn here in the stronghold at sleep to make it day. And if we end up dying in the Ender Dragon fight, I will respawn right here. So hopefully that should be a nice safe way of doing that. I've got my spare Eye of Ender, which we're going to put in the portal in a second. I'll bring this carved pumpkin with us just in case we need to dodge out of the way of some Endermen. And 
glass bottles. This is something I did not make in the previous episode, but it's actually going to be quite useful for collecting the dragon's breath. And it is possible to respawn the ender dragon in versions after Minecraft 1.9 or 1.9 and beyond. So you can collect dragon's breath at a different time. You don't have to worry about doing this on your first fight but I figure I might as well. It's also a useful way of clearing up the dragon's breath if it sort of spams the area around you. I'm actually going to put away my axe and my shovel because technically speaking, we shouldn't need them for this fight. They might be useful for clearing up some stuff afterwards, getting rid of the ladders and so forth, but there's nothing in the end that we need a shovel for. You might need to bring a shovel if you're pillaring up with dirt instead of stone like I'm doing, but I thought it was best just to bring my efficiency pickaxe and a decent amount of stone. So I'm probably going to just chuck out the stone bricks that I've got here. I don't like getting rid of resources this way all of the time, but I figure we may as well at this point. Let's make a crafting table. Let's make that furnace. Let's smelt the iron and make sure that we use a little bit more of that wood to make ourselves a better shield because eight durability is not really going to cut it especially if we have to defend ourselves from endermen we don't want that shield breaking on us so let's very quickly make a furnace i want to get to the dragon fight as soon as possible believe me so i am yeah i'm not keen on wasting time here now let me drop a chest down here i could have just put the other resources in here couldn't i really <laughs> that might have been a better way of doing it let's put these iron doors in there because they're quite expensive to make so it's nice to keep them let's drop a coal in there let's smelt the rest of this iron don't need to smelt it all but that should be good and i guess we will bring this extra cobblestone with us as well let's make a nice little pile of it over here so let's sort out our hotbar for this fight. And it's nice and easy to swap items in and out of the hotbar should you need to. Uh, but I think we'll start off with a potion of swiftness and some ladders in here. We're going to put this chest, I guess, probably in the ender chest for the moment. And uh, I think the rest of this we should be okay with. We'll probably need some of these snowballs or eggs on our hotbar to start with. A bucket of water is very useful to have with you as well. That's something I didn't mention yet, but I always carry a bucket of water on me anyway, so it's not really a big deal. But in this case, I definitely want to make sure I've brought that because that will be very useful for a couple of things. First, defending against Enderman, and secondly, in case the dragon throws us up high and we need to break our fall with some water. Same if you're actually uh, falling from one of the towers. It helps to have a pool of water below you so that you can fall into it safely without taking any damage. Now let's make a quick shield here. That should be good. I'll put my old shield here in this chest and we'll just take the brand new one into the battle with us. That should be great. And the rest of this iron can probably just go in the chest here. We don't need to worry too much about that. I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> it's been a while since I fought the dragon on my own in a, for the first time in a single player world. So... This is a little bit nerve-wracking for me, and I'm really hoping this goes well the first time we do it. But I think now is the time. Now is as good a time as any to complete this portal. And let's go to the end. This portal, by the way, is one of the, the prettier things in Minecraft. The, the, the portal texture is really cool. It's got that kind of interesting scrolling thing where it stays in the same place, even if you're moving around. That's, that's really cool looking. Anyway... I'm pretty sure there's a name for that, I just can't remember what it is. So stepping through this portal, we will arrive on an obsidian platform in the end dimension. And the important thing, first off, is to make sure that we are safe and that we're not going to get knocked off the platform. Sometimes the platform spawns underneath the island, in which case it will look like we're encased in end stone. Other times your platform can spawn outside of the central island, at which point it is necessary to bridge to the island itself. So it might actually be worth keeping some cobblestone blocks on our hot bar just in case. But I think we're ready to go. Let's do this. Okay, we're in the box, fantastic. And the Ender Dragon's boss health bar is there at the top of the screen. We are ready for our first Minecraft boss fight. We can hear the flapping of Ender Dragon wings. And before I do anything else, I'm probably going to pause the game, go into the menu and turn down hostile creature sounds because the Ender Dragon can be really loud. And I don't want you guys to have me be drowned out while we do this fight. But here we are in the end. Now, the most important thing right now is to look at the ground to make sure that we're not looking at any Enderman and making eye contact and to see where the dragon is. The dragon is flying around up there right now and it doesn't seem to be paying us any attention. This is good. You can see these obsidian pillars have crystals floating on the top of them and there's a beam coming out from those crystals. Anytime the dragon makes contact with any of these crystals via that beam, it will regenerate health. So there is no point attacking the dragon right now. The whole point right now is to get rid of those crystals. 
Two of them will have cages around the top of them, which means you have to get rid of those iron bars somehow. Oh, and the dragon is making its first attack on us. It will also attack the Enderman as it goes through here. So do not worry too much about the Enderman aggroing all around you. Unless one of them is actively attacking you, you don't need to worry too much about that. So the reason we bought a bow and arrow and a ton of projectiles is not, as you might expect, to attack the dragon while it's flying around. Instead, we want to <laughs> we want to be able to get rid of those crystals on the top of there, either by shooting at them with a bow and arrow like this, or potentially by firing snowballs at them. Now we need to make sure our aim is true here. We need to make sure we're aiming a little higher for that one. Yes, I think we took that one out. Normally you will see them explode if you're firing at them from a distance. Uh-oh, <laughs> looks like the dragon had a go at us there, but we should be fine. And yep, looks like it's healing up from that crystal up there. Fantastic. Okay, now as you saw just then, if you take out a crystal while the dragon is attempting to regenerate from it... Oh, looks like we drew some attention here. Looks like we need to take out this guy. Remember to use your sword and shield tactics if you're dealing with Enderman. And if all else fails, you can burrow down into the ground and make sure you have yourself a hidey hole to hide from those Endermen. So as I was saying, yeah, the uh, anytime you destroy a crystal while the dragon is healing from it, it will actually take a little bit of damage, but it should soon regenerate that from the other towers that are around here. So the dragon has two ways of attacking you. It will either fireball you and it will leave these kind of pools of purple acid around the place and you can hear it anytime it makes that noise. Oh, there we go. Endermen are attacking us again. Uh, anytime it makes that kind of whoosh noise. It's usually throwing a fireball at you. <laughs> there we go. So we need to make sure we dodge around, make sure you're keeping mobile here. The other thing, as you saw earlier, it will swoop down and try and attack you head on, which usually means you take a little bit of damage, but will often mean you get thrown a good distance. Now you'll notice the dragon comes to stand on the bedrock portal and just flaps like that. That is usually a sign that you can come down and attack it with a sword or uh, whatever melee weapons you happen to have. Now the snowballs are a really great way of taking out these crystals up there if you're good at throwing them, which personally I am not, but there we go, we got one, fantastic. Snowballs are a nice way of doing that and it also means you don't waste as many arrows, so if you wanted to attack the dragon using a bow and arrow while it's flying around, which you have to be a pretty good shot for, but it's, a, it's an option, then you can always use snowballs to attack the crystals and save those arrows for when you want to do some real damage. Because as I mentioned before, snowballs won't actually damage the dragon, but they will allow you to take out these crystals. And the same goes for eggs as well. You can actually egg these things in order to take out the crystals. Now we obviously need to be throwing a little bit higher and it might be very difficult to get some of these taller towers taken care of. So we definitely need to, uh, <laughs> to use a bow and arrow for that. The bow and arrow has a slightly better range, I think, than some of the snowballs and so forth. So let's throw the last of our snowballs up here, see if we can get that last crystal on the top of the tower. Looks like the tower is slightly too high in that case. All right, we will go with bow and arrow then. We will be able to take the crystals out a little bit easier using a bow and arrow, and we'll try and aim for some of these upper towers. I can't tell which ones I've got so far. Yes, there's one. That one went. And let's see if we can take out the other one. Oh, so close. You can see the arrow sticking into the top of that tower there. It's going to take a little bit of uh, trial and error if you're not that good with a bow. You need to adjust your angle of fire each time and try and not to get hit by the dragon in the process. <laughs> Make sure you know where the dragon is at all times because it is definitely the most dangerous thing you're going to encounter while you're here. We've dealt with Enderman before. We have never dealt with the Ender Dragon up until now. So let's see if we can take out that one while it's healing from that. Oh, almost. It looks like the arrow went over the top. Let's see if we can land one on the crystal. Nope, looks like we missed a couple of times there. And I'm trying to get it while, yes, while the dragon is healing from it, no worries. Uh, right, so let's let's handle these last two pillars, the ones with the cages on. And from up here, we should hopefully be able to see if there are any other crystals left. But it looks like these two are the, the main problem. This is where you can choose between having ladders or a, uh, a pillar of cobblestone to get up here. But what I recommend doing is placing a bucket of water at the bottom here. And hopefully, <laughs> in this case, it's a little bit difficult because of the way the land is shaped. But hopefully you should be able to uh, have a pool of water spread out at the bottom here. And then when you place ladders up the side of this tower, it will allow you to just jump back down into that pool of water after you've dis destroyed the crystal up here. Now this is a tricky part because if you get very close to an explosion from these crystals, it will kill you. So what I recommend doing is staying one block below the top of the tower, stay on the ladder, get the end crystal in your sights with a pickaxe, and then just tap it like so. And then you should, <laughs> if you get knocked off by that, 
You shouldn't actually fully explode. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Looks like the dragon has decided to throw us around. And uh, yeah, hopefully you should be able to take no damage. Even if you get knocked off the tower a little bit, you should land in the pool of water you placed at the bottom of the tower. You can do the same thing by pillaring up using cobblestone or something like that, but it can be a little bit dangerous. And obviously you want to place a bucket of water down here or something so that you're not taking out your water source when you pillar up using the cobblestone like so. Ladders are probably a little bit quicker than doing this, and you want to be quick, otherwise the dragon might fly past and, yeah, drop some acid nearby, which is a great excuse to take out our glass bottles, and, yep, there we go, get the you need a mint advancement, and uh, let's quickly eat a golden apple because we need to regenerate health here just in case we get knocked off the tower by anything. Okay, looks like we should be okay. Fantastic. Let's take out the cobblestone on our way down just in case we need that, and let's quickly look around to see if there are any other crystals left in action. I don't see any right now, so I think we should be okay. The dragon is coming to rest on top of the bedrock portal. Now, when it does that, uh, it usually means that we are towards the end of the fight. Let's quickly take a look around to see if it's regenerating health from anywhere as it flies, but hopefully it should not be, and the endermen are all aggroed on it instead of aggroing on us, which is good. Don't forget you can put your pumpkin head on if you're worried about looking at Enderman at any point. It will obscure your vision, which means fighting the dragon itself will be a little bit more difficult, but it's a good way of making sure the Endermen don't get mad at you. Now, once the dragon is down here on this portal, we can get up close and we can really do some damage by melee attacking it, usually from the back. If you aim for the legs, that's definitely the best way to do it because the dragon's head is currently spewing out a lot more of that purple acid. It will breathe fire on you if you go anywhere near its head. So best to attack it from behind if you possibly can. The dragon will rotate on top of the bedrock portal though, so you've got to be very careful about the angle that it takes and make sure that you aren't uh, in the line of fire, as it were. Let's pick up these extra ender pearls as well, just in case we need to make a quick getaway. And you'll also find that when the dragon leaves the bedrock portal, it will also end up uh, knocking you back occasionally. So that's what you might need the potion of swiftness and the potion of slow falling for. You might need to uh, make sure that you can fall <laughs> with without taking too much fall damage because the dragon can deliver a very powerful hit to you if you're not careful. Now, while it's in the air, of course, you can still fire at it with a bow and arrow, but once it's down here on top of the bedrock portal, you will not be able to damage it using a bow and arrow. The arrows will just bounce off. So this is the bit where it's important to get in some melee hits. Don't stand too close to the portal if you can help it because the dragon might rotate and it will very easily turn around and knock you off. There we go. Yep, need to make sure we rotate to make sure the dragon isn't dealing us any more damage because you saw how quickly our health went down when it hit us with the acid before. You definitely want to avoid that if you possibly can. But it looks like this is going very well. The dragon is down to one third of health now and is flying pretty slowly. So we should be able to, if we're careful, yep, there we go, hit it with another another arrow and this might be it folks we might be able to go in for the kill here the dragon might leave the bedrock portal a little bit early here once we've done a little bit of damage but here's hoping that we can get it taken care of we're only a few hits away at this point the dragon is turning so we've got to make sure we adjust for that okay looks like we are a few hits away folks let's make sure we get this done couple more arrows while it's in the air potentially if it flies low that's a very good opportunity for you that enderman in front of me is very very close and it looks like we might be able to finish it off while it's in the air with a bow and arrow we've only got one hit left on it let's make it count yes and we've done it folks the dragon will dive down towards the bedrock portal at the last second but we have done it we have freed the end from the dragon we've got our advancement i've taken a screenshot for the thumbnail as well and it drops a boatload of experience. That was great, folks. We actually did super well there. Give yourselves a pat on the back. <laughs> Hopefully you guys were cheering me on. And while we're at it, we can probably clear up a little bit more of this dragon breath. It breathed a lot of breath over here but it looks like we've got a decent amount of that and we're already getting tons of experience. Now the dragon will drop a lot of experience and by a lot, I mean, look at the levels we're going to gain. We're probably going to end up at around level 80 or so. It usually drops experience up to about level yeah level 68 that's pretty great 70 fantastic looks like we've cleared up all of the experience from the surrounding area and it's for this reason that a lot of people like to bring enchanting stations when they come to the end they want to bring some bookshelves and an enchanting table just so they can collect as much xp as possible 
and enchant a bunch of tools and books and that kind of stuff if they've got the capacity to. But there we go. Not only have we now activated the return portal, which we can drop into and it will return us to the last point that we slept in a bed or the spawn point if the bed isn't available. And we also have a dragon egg. This is the only time in a regular survival world you will be able to get a dragon egg. Some people like to modify the game a little bit so that the dragon egg drops every time you kill a dragon, but the dragon egg is currently the only one you can have in a vanilla default survival world. Now, the dragon egg will also teleport if you attempt to mine it. So there's a very specific way of collecting this. I'm going to tap it once to get it to leave the portal, and you'll notice there that it's affected by gravity. So one of the things we can do with this, if you drop an anvil onto a slab or a torch or something like an, an anvil or a block of gravel, anything that's affected by gravity, if you break the block below it and drop it onto a torch or a slab or, or anything that's not a full block, the block itself will actually break and you can collect it. So once you've tapped the ender dragon egg once or twice to get it to move away from the bedrock pillar, all you need to do is break the block underneath the block that it's standing on, place a torch there, then break the block it's standing on, it'll drop, break as an item, and then you get to claim the dragon egg for yourself. So that is that. That is the dragon fight all taken care of. Now there's one other thing we do need to take care of while we're here, and it's this. This little bedrock portal over here will generate every time you kill a dragon at various points around the island. And we'll go into the method of respawning the ender dragon later on, but that up there is a portal to the outer end islands. And what that means is we can travel further afield to islands that look quite similar to this one, but stretch out into the distance, and that is where we will find end cities. And the end cities have some very valuable loot in which we will get to in another episode, but I don't think we're going to go there straight away. I think the first thing I want to do is drop back through the bedrock portal, respawn at the stronghold, and take inventory. But of course, before we do that, once you drop into the end portal, basically every time you go in there, you get to watch the end credits of Minecraft and read the end poem, which is a long kind of poem that takes place after you fought the dragon and jump back through the portal. It's it's really cool. I recommend reading this. Everybody who plays Minecraft should do this at least once, but I'm going to skip it for today because it's kind of a personal thing, I feel like, so it's probably something that you need to do for yourself. So I'm going to hit escape. It will skip that whole sequence, and we are back here in the stronghold. Well done. <laughs> I think that was pretty well done. That went about as well as it could have done. And I'm going to put the dragon egg into the ender chest here so that we've got that for all time. And at some point in future, we might even create some sort of monument to us having slayed the dragon in this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. But that's pretty good. We didn't even need our potion of swiftness or our potion of slow falling. We got a little bit of dragon's breath bottled up. That can be used for potion brewing later. We've acquired a little bit of end stone as well. And we <laughs> managed to snowball a couple of the towers, which I was really happy with. So that's going to be it for this episode, folks. That is the Ender Dragon fight in full in Minecraft Java Edition, and I'm pretty sure it works the same on the other editions. So I do hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Thank you so much for watching. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on the episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.